Hidden amongst Hampstead's beautiful architecture are also some fascinating churches. Marilyn, firstly, thanks for agreeing to meet me here this morning. One of the things that fascinates me is the churches here, and I have three churches in particular. What can you tell me about this one, St John's in Church Row? Well, this is very interesting because this is on the site of the oldest church in Hampstead. There's been a church recorded here since the 1300s, but some people think there may have been a church here before that because Hampstead is actually recorded in the Doomsday Book. As I say, it's not the original church now. That church fell to rack and ruin, and by the mid 18th century, the congregation were refusing to come here because it was so dangerous, you know, it's flying oh, on top bad. of them. So the trustees of the church um, actually petitioned to Parliament to see if they would give them £2,500 for the repairs and they actually refused it. And so the Lord of the Manor of Hampstead donated a £1,000 and then right. the rest was donated by public subscription from the parishioners. And famous people associated with the church. Well, my favourite is John Constable. He's got a huge family tomb here. His wife sadly died in Hampstead in 1828 of TB. And he decided at that point he wanted to be buried alongside her. And in fact, six out of their seven children were buried here. But also there's tombs to John Harrison, who discovered longitude, some of the de Morio family, some of the Gilbert Scott family. Uh, there's a whole host of really famous people buried here. Which is what here. you would expect in Hampstead. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I think it's time to move on now to one of my other churches. So Marilyn St Mary's. It was founded just over 200 years ago in um, 1816, and it was founded by the Abbe Morel, who was actually um, a refugee from France, from northern France. He was a man from the clergy. About 5,000 clergymen came as refugees to England after the French Revolution, and he moved to Hampstead, and he just thought it was fantastic, and he lived here right to his end of his life in 1852. He's buried in the porch of the church, apparently buried in vestments he himself made and that he used to wear for special sacramental occasions. In 1829 uh, was the Catholic Emancipation Act. Right, yeah. And, and until then, Catholics weren't allowed to openly practice. So St Mary's Church, um, if you can see the road it's in, is just small cottages. Yeah, yeah. So it only actually looked like a small cottage until the 1850s. There was an, another ruling saying that Catholics were allowed to ring church bells. Oh, right. So they changed the frontage of the church in 1850 so that it's got this lovely bell tower and the statue of the Virgin um, on it as well. It's had a number of uh, important people associated with it as well. So again, the Gilbert Scott family right. uh, were involved in some of the uh, decorations and interiors for it, and they worshipped there. Uh, Judy Dench was married there oh, with right. Michael Williams, and they helped with raising funds for right. the church. Also, Graham Greene was married there earlier was he, on the writer? as well. That's right. We're now in Downshire Hill, which is one of my favourite cut-throughs in Hampstead. I use it a lot in the taxi, and I pass this church. Is it a significant church in Hampstead, St John's on Downshire Hill? Uh, yes, it's a very significant church. It's actually Grade 1 listed. The land was bought when they were developing this area in 1813, and it was bought by three people, a builder, a solicitor and a vicar. Oh, very enterprising. Uh, very enterprising. I thought, we'll build this church for the people who live in this road. It's one of the only churches which has still got the original pews from the 18th century. The clock on the front is from 1823. It's original to the church, built by a clockmaker in Clerkenwell. The church actually continued in use until about 1916, when it was bought by one family that rented it at a peppercorn rent to, as long as there was a congregation. They said, don't sell it just uh, keep it going. And he, he died in 1938, and it just continued in that way until the 2000s. And then it wasn't until 2003 that the congregation actually bought the church themselves. So the church, as I say, is completely independently run. Wow, so Hampstead certainly has got some history attached Indeed, to its yes. churches. 